All right, guys, Zach here this week, and welcome back to We Need to Talk, the show where we cover football on the internet over the past seven days. And what a seven days it's been, with Arsenal fans resorting to begging for a result. Pep Guardiola wanting to swap trophies with Jurgen Klopp. And then we'll have to win the main trophy, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure feel like he'll have to win. <laughs> so, maybe we can swap. <laughs> and Neville and Carragher fighting over who gets to have a go on the big screen. Go, 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 go back, go back a minute. <laughs> anyway, this week we need to talk about Unai Emery. Now what a couple of hours it's been. We're shooting this in the morning on Friday and it is official. Unai Emery has been sacked by Arsenal Football Club. It's kind of hard to argue that Emery should have stayed or at least been given a second chance until Norwich this weekend after the Frankfurt result last night. I mean, only reportedly anyway, 20,000 fans turned up in a 60,000 seat stadium and it looked empty, especially in a game which was reported by Arsenal to have been sold out. So there's some potential boycotting. And the Frankfurt fans were even louder than the home fans. And when you look at some of these stats, it's even harder to argue. It's been 36 days since Arsenal last won a game. It's been 54 days since Arsenal last won a Premier League game. And it's been 110 days since Arsenal last won a Premier League away game. He joined in May 2018, and since then he's won 43 of 78 games. And to be a top flight manager, arguably trying to push for a title chase, or at least to get into the top four, that's not good enough. Only George Graham in 94-95 has a lower win percentage with 29% than Emery's in the Premier League this season, which is 31. And their recent games have shown this more than ever. They have not won any of their recent seven games in all competitions, drawing five and losing two. And they never went on as poor as a run across 1,235 games under Arsene Wenger. Last waiting this long for a win in February 1992 under George Graham, which was eight games. Now, is it really a surprise? Arsenal backed their man, gave him the seal of approval just a couple of weeks ago, and we know what happens when that goes out. Josh Cronke, who's part of the board, said, our most sincere thanks go to Unai and his colleagues who were unrelenting in their efforts to get the club back to competing at the level we all expect and demand. We wish Unai and his team nothing but success for the future. The decision has been taken due to results and performances not being at the level required, and we've asked Freddy Lundberg to take responsibility for the first team as interim coach. They also finish off the statement with stating, the search for a new head coach is underway and we will make a further announcement when that process is complete. So I wish I could give you some more news about the sacking and everything around it. However, it's literally just happened. Now, are we really surprised? There's been loads of talk about Unai Emery's tactics, leaving out Ozil, disagreements with players, <laughs> Granit Xhaka, for one. And mentioning Granit Xhaka, there's been nine different captains since he took over. And in those 78 games, 24 of them were captained by Koscielny, who was a captain before he even joined. Personally, this was to be expected. Um, we've seen recently over the past couple of games on just the displeasure between Arsenal fans. And I think once you lose the connection with the fans, it's only a matter of time before you leave. I mean, literally look at Sarri last season at Chelsea. Unai Emery was a good pit stop for Arsenal, but let's be realistic. If they were ever wanted to get back into being a title challenger, Unai Emery was never going to be that man. He was a defensive coach who took over a team known for being a very fluid, systematic, attacking team that played really nice football and were enjoyable to watch. Let's be honest, it was doomed from the second he signed the contract. When Arsenal fans aren't backing you from the start, you're not gonna be staying there very long. However, who is going to be the next manager? I mean, we've got a list here of the, currently the bookies' favorites. Number one is Nuno Espirito Santo. Right now in his position, would he want to take over a club that is falling apart? And personally, it would be an okay signing. However, you think the Arsenal fans right now would want someone to take them back, to bring them back for the title charge. And the other possible target, second favorite, is Mikel Arteta. Now there were lots of rumors before Unai Emery joined that Mikel Arteta would be manager. However, 
I don't think he's quite ready yet. I think he's still trying to learn his way over at City. So there would be a lot of risk bringing him in. The other one is Freddy Lundberg. We explained that situation earlier. Max Allegri is also a possibility. He's been having some time off since leaving Juve. And you know what? That would be a great signing. Why not bring him in? However, he does have a different style of play to what Arsenal fans would be expecting. He is more defensive. He would need new signings. That defence would essentially be ripped apart the centre-backs, especially then Arsenal would be needing to put their hands in their pocket to get in his signings. The other one which Arsenal fans will be praying for is Maurizio Pochettino. He's 8-1 to one to join. However, I just don't see this happening. I don't see a world where Maurizio Pochettino is joining Arsenal Football Club. He's refused to join Barcelona due to his ties to Espanyol. And I think if he's, if he's got that kind of love for a club, he'll still have that kind of love for Tottenham and knows the rivalry there. Other names also include Rafa Benitez getting back from China. Not the worst. Eddie Howe. I'm sure Arsenal fans would love that. Patrick Vieira. Uh, Brendan Rodgers and Diego Simeone. He's always linked to every club when they lose a manager. But what do you guys think? about the Arsenal situation. Who should they get in? Was Unai Emery deserving of the sack? The whole player situation. It's, it's a mess right now, but the Premier League this season has been insane. We've seen two sackings or high profile managers before the new year. Let me know what you think in the comments below. On to the good now, and it is actually some good news where Xabi Alonso has had his reputation reinstated. Now, if you remember a few years ago, loads of Spanish footballers like Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Marcelo, Luka Modric, and Diego Costa, and Xabi Alonso, were all included in this tax fraud situation. Now, of all those names I mentioned, apart from Xabi Alonso, they all agreed to fines instead of fighting their case. However, Xabi Alonso said no. He said, I am going to face this case. I'm going to take it to court, because he did not commit tax fraud. And he's been acquitted. Xabi Alonso did not commit tax fraud. So it's good we can put that to bed and he can focus on managing in La Liga. The bad this week comes from Le Keep. Um, Jesus, Gal Gavette, who used to be managed by Sam Allardyce, has come out and said, back at Blackburn, uh, he used to try and fire players up before a game. This one was against Manchester United in 2010 by showing them clips of Gladiator and 300. Oh God. And he essentially said, and I quote, we were all like, ah, and mimic soldiers with swords. And after 30 minutes, they were three nil down and they lost seven one. And finally, we finish with the ugly and it is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Now, there's news everywhere that he had joined a brand new club. He even put an Instagram photo up with himself pictured in a hammer buys football kit. And we all thought, could this be the return of Zlatan Ibrahimovic? Could he be returning to Sweden? No, he actually bought a 23.5% uh, stake of the club. Now, it's safe to say Malmo weren't too happy with the vice chairman actually coming out and saying, Zlatan has lost his grip on what it means to be Malmo. He thinks we'll be happy for his sake. We're not. And if you remember just a couple of weeks ago, Malmo actually unveiled a statue of Ibrahimovic. And to be fair, it now looks like a silly decision. As fans who are angered by his part ownership of the rival club have stuck a toilet seat under his arm, a bin bag over his face, and it was set on fire not too long after. The statue itself is now being guarded by police with even fights breaking out between the guards and the vandals. Yeah, if I was Latan, I wouldn't be returning to Sweden anytime soon. So that's all we have time for on this week's We Need to Talk. If you guys have enjoyed it, please smash that like button. If we get 6,000 likes, next week's We Need to Talk, we'll do a deep dive into what happened, the behind the scenes at Arsenal, like we did for Pochettino. If you've enjoyed this video, click on screen right now for more, and we'll see you next week. Bye. I should have winked there. I apologise.